welcome back to the program. Just join us on Twitter at Channels TV and at CTV Tempili in case you want to weigh in on these discussions that we're having on the program this evening. Now let's look at the African markets where sentiments um, we track, sentiments on the markets that we track were broadly positive as the Johannesburg Stock Exchange emerged the lone loser week and week by 1.40%. The Kenyan NSE All Share Index advanced the most by almost 5% and stronger buy sentiments in market bellwethers. Similarly, the Ghana Stock Exchange and Egypt's Stock Exchange gained 0.58% and 0.37% week on week and respectively. So let's get back to business on the side of the NASD OTC. Sometimes last year, the management of Nigeria's unlisted securities market, that's the NASD, and the league management company of Nigeria, LMC, met in Enugu to discuss the possibility of commercializing football, some football clubs under the umbrella of NPFL and easing governments off the pressure of ownership and funding. And a few weeks ago, the OTC announced expression of interest, EOI, to issuing houses registered to the NASD of the possibility of acting as financial advisors in the listing of eight of these clubs selected to serve as pilots preparatory for the full listing of other interested leagues on the NASD OTC. Now, we'll take a look at that again, Mr. Ajamale, you signed the you signed the MOU last year. You attended the AGM of LMC in Enugu, and discussions came up. And now it looks like we're close to the reality of these football clubs coming on board. I think we have Inyiba Football Club, Kano Pilas, Shooting Stars, basically the eight rank, highly ranked uh, clubs. So talk to us about this prospects of bringing these guys on the Nigerian capital markets. Yeah, well, um, football all over the world is is a money spinner. Um, if it's run right, it is a money spinner. Is it all, could it also be a money spinner in, in, in Nigeria? Um, think about it this way. You've got, if you have a couple of people playing um, in a park or even on a driveway, after a while you see a crowd gathering to watch the game. We love football. We love we watching football in this country. They describe it um, as religion, in, in, actually. In, as a religion sometimes. Um, so we have seen, and what the MPFL sees is that if it can be structured right and run properly and run on a, with a commercial eye, it can actually be a money spinner in this country as well. Now, um, of course, some of the things that have happened to football in the country is that uh, funding has been difficult, yeah. management has been, um, sometimes there are some things to be desired, um, sometimes it's been politicized as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you run it like a proper business that has shareholders to account to, its fortunes will probably change. They'll probably have money to pay their players, even acquire better players, um, there will be better training, better care for them. And so I think what the chairman of uh, MPFL is trying to do is he's trying to raise the quality of the game, raise the level of the game, raise the profitability of the game. Um, imagine a stadium that is owned by a football club that you can take your family to. I mean, that already starts a whole value chain in itself. And so what we're doing is we're partnering with them to um, ensure that that dream becomes a reality. So expression of interest was issued out to Asian houses recently, mm -hmm. and uh, talk to us about the reception of financial advisors in the Nigerian capital markets. Okay, so um, the expression of interest was uh, open for a week, and what LMC was asking for was for um, financial advisors who are registered with the NSDOTC, in other words, who know how the OTC market works mm -hmm. and who are already players in the OTC market, yeah. for them to express an interest in uh, commercializing or securitizing uh, the football clubs. We think, um, we hear there was a pretty good response from the market, and I think they're in the process of collating. They closed uh, two Fridays ago, and I think they're in the process of um, figuring out who is going to do what. Um, I think their schedule next is to have a meeting in Lagos with all the shortlisted parties that they have, and then from there, they'll probably start taking them to all the state governments for them to actually sign on the parties. The state governments will be the ones who, who will sign on the parties, but the MPFL is actually going to, the league management company is going to be overseeing the whole process of recommending and letting the state governments um, uh, sign on. You're taking a very bold step at bringing these guys, these clubs on board. In fact, this is just the first eight. There's more to come according to the blueprints that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, how much is 
actually, how much are they likely to raise on, the, on, the, on your platform, the NASD? Well, so that leads to, I think that would be best for the financial advisors to answer. Right. Um, what I do know is that they, each, each club, it depends on what their aspirations are. Mm. So some clubs might not need very much. Um, the, 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 the requirements they'll have would vary significantly. I think some have mentioned numbers of three billion, some have mentioned more, some have mentioned less. So it depends on each club and what their aspirations are. Some might want to buy their stadium, for example. Others might want to just refurbish, um, may want to pay a lease for the stadium, or others might want not to have a stadium yet and actually have that one out um, sourced differently. Mm. Uh, so basically, w uh, yeah, uh, do you think the financial advisors will have some kind of identified um, investors, HNIs, who will possibly be able to key into this plan? Well, for each club, um, and these are, remember, these, these are eight of the top 20 okay. um, in, in football in Nigeria, and they're eight of the leaders, basically, of the pack. Uh, th they all have very strong followings. Mm, yeah, I agree. And for those followings, there already is a huge retail market for the shares, of small packets of the shares that will be sold. Um, again, you then have very high net worth individuals, mm. you have companies, you have uh, firms, localized firms in each of the areas where the clubs come from that are also quite eager to um, have a stake in those, in those clubs. So I think um, it will be quite an interesting, um, quite yeah. an interesting event to see. And can you possibly give us a, a sense of the type of offering that we will be seeing, uh, given the fact that it's coming on NASD OCC, mm -hmm. there is a, a higher level that it can also assign to? Mm -hmm. Well, w what will happen, and I think the timeline essentially is that for the, the first of the clubs to come into the market in September, right. um, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, they are, some of them are not, most of them are not PLCs yet. So they have to incorporate boards, they have to... Um, convert into a public company first before they even start the capital raising process. Um, so what is the upside? We think the first will come into the market maybe by September and we think from that point on it then becomes quite competitive among them and we think um, the others will follow quite quickly. Mr. Jamali, it's always, always a pleasure to have you on Capital Thank you very Markets. Much for having Thanks for finding time to come on the program. Thank you very much. And that's all the time we have on Capital Market. You can weigh in on social media, Twitter and YouTube for more. I'm Temple Ashadu and I'll see you next time.